everyone, this is Reef DVMs coming at you from my basement sump area of my own place here. Um, I'd like to discuss with you today uh, a topic that's kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, as you can see, I'm in my sump area. This is uh, my setup for my dream tank upstairs. It's running great. It happens to be a modified Zeovit system currently that we're using a balling method on. And uh, with that, we've generated a lot of questions as to why we use what we use when it comes to calcium and alkalinity, and particularly the balling method. And the answer to that is simple. We've tried just about everything else. Um, we've done our tests and our homework, and um, this is the one that fits us the best. But that's not the easy answer for a lot of people. The easy answer um, isn't there. So what we thought we'd do is put out a video today um, which is a presentation style video that I put together explaining the differences between two part, two part plus, three part, three part light, balling light, and even balling so that uh, a newcomer into the field can make the right decision for their setup as to which way they want to add calcium, al alkalinity, carbonate, magnesium, and so forth into their setups. So sit back, folks, and enjoy this educational video. Please like or subscribe to our channel, and we'll keep putting out great educational videos like this. Thanks, folks. So let's get into the presentation. We want to supply some information you can actually understand about these different methods and maybe even a better way of understanding them so that you can fi figure out which one you want to use. To start with, it, it's, it's, it's probably best that we talk about where these are popular. Two part, two part plus and three part, very popular in the United States with our manufacturers. The light balling and the balling method, of course, obviously being made by Hans overseas, is very well known and loved in Europe. So we kind of got, you know, two opinions, an American version and a European version, and both work. Um, but people always wonder why this is. Is it just because we're separated by one big ocean? No, not really. So we want to actually look at the details, uh, but to look at the details, you got to understand the terms. Um, Two-part traditionally refers to the addition of calcium and sodium, particularly calcium chloride dihydrate and sodium hydro hydrogen carbonate, which we'll call sodium bicarb, um, kind of like baking soda. Uh, the terms two-part plus, three-part, and light balling, eh, they get a little bit more muddled, but basically you're adding in a magnesium set of salts and in light balling you're adding some various trace elements. Uh, the balling method pretty much you're adding the, again the top calcium and sodium but then you're adding a sodium free salt that contains all your trace elements and your amino acids to help ionically balance the system. I know they all look similar I, I got that um, that's where the confusing part is because they all use calcium and they all use some type of alkalinity or bicarbonate. Um, and, and, and that is the truth, it, and that's why people can get away with two part, and they can also get away with balling and have successful systems, because they both use those two parts. But the difference really is, is in each of the systems um, and how they interact with the third solution. For example, uh, typically two part, you're adding, um, uh, in two part plus and three part, you're adding magnesium chloride or magnesium sulfate. In light balling, again, you're adding various elements in a product that doesn't contain any salt um, in hopes to balance. And then in the balling method, you're using a salt that's sodium-free that will balance, and it's got elements and amino acids in it. So the question then becomes, how does the third solution or third part work, particularly in the balling, because that's where the most difference is. And, well, of course, you know, chemistry is chemistry. Certainly not trying to bore people with this. Uh, but when you discuss chemistry on a two-part level and then reference it to balling, you've got to understand what happens. We're taking calcium, um, we're taking a, a sodium product that's got bicarbonate on it, we're putting them in our tanks, preferably at two different times so they're not, you know, directly interacting. But once they're mixed up in the tank, the calcium comes off the one side and attaches to the carbonate and makes our calcium carbonate that the coral love. The sodium binds with the chloride, you get a little extra water as waste, maybe a little extra CO2 as waste, and the sodium chloride's not toxic, but it starts to make an ionic imbalance that we can't really detect. People using two-part, two-part plus, three-part, and even light balling all handle this 
indirectly by doing water changes. They just don't realize it. If they didn't do water changes, their salinity would increase. The balling people don't have to worry about this so much because their third part is sodium chloride free and it binds with their first parts after the conversion's been made to balance it out. So they don't have to pull it out of the tank. So is it then ionically better? Is it a better method period? Eh, I'm going to tell you that the answer is really simple and it might surprise you. We don't know. Um, a lot of us, including myself, believe ionically balanced products are more close to the ocean. Um, and we certainly understand that balling is definitely an improvement over probably regular two-part and two-part plus with just magnesium. And certainly three-part with just magnesium added because it's just got more in it that mimics natural ocean water more. But as for light balling in comparison to balling, and it gets a little stickier because if you use a real balanced salt and you're doing lots of water changes, you know, you might be at the same point. But then you have to understand that balling done right will need less water changes for nutrient support, only using water changes then for waste. And you could go down that road that, well, balling at that point in time is better. Um, but yet then you could play the devil's advocate to that and say, well, but if you use two-part with a good salt and you do a lot of water changes, you can compensate for the missing electrolytes, the missing amino acids and trace elements by doing water changes often. And of course, that's why two-part systems can be successful too. Just takes a little bit more work with the water changes. So when it all comes down to it, we're basically talking about a preference and how close you want to get to oceanic conditions, which are ionically balanced which is why I prefer balling, but it may not be that way for everybody. So then we get down the discussion of which one's best for use in the reef system. And the answer is, it really depends upon your setup. Um, you know, we like to think of two part as a basic aquarium supplement. It's easy for beginners. It's relatively cheap, which is a good thing. Um, it's, it's in a situation where it's easy to find in Europe. It's made by a lot of manufacturers. You know, it really doesn't uh, have a lot of complexity to it because you only have two tests to monitor, uh, basically calcium and alkalinity, and you'll know what you're putting in and what your system's doing. It certainly works good for small tanks. It works good for those up to 100 gallons. When you get above that, if you're over 100 gallons, you're probably putting in a lot more coral, and then it's going to be hard to keep up because you're going to get ionically unbalanced and your water changes are going to be huge. It doesn't always work as well with those special corals either. When you get into three-part, we look at it like, well, it's a mid-grade. It's certainly moderately priced, so it doesn't hurt the pocketbook too much. And it's it's got basically the additive part to it, which is magnesium. And most manufacturers, you know, make some type of magnesium addition that you can add in. Um, again, that's why they call it three-part a lot of times. It only requires two tests, but a lot of people will do a magnesium test just to kind of know where they're at because they are adding magnesium. It certainly handles a larger tank because it can handle more coral and the coral benefit better. And it certainly can take on more species of SPS and more finer corals. But you still got to do those water changes to remove that excess of sodium chloride. Even if you don't think you're doing it for that reason, you technically are. And then there's light balling, which then we categorize in our field as kind of an excellent aquarium supplement. It's higher priced, but still affordable. Um, it's definitely out there. It's a little harder to find in the United States. Um, it's definitely more popular in Europe. Um, there's just limited manufacturers of it. It does require some more tests because you're going to be putting in more supplements um, with, with the, the, the solutions. Um, and certainly it handles much larger tanks. Of course, it gets pricier the larger the tank you go. But then you can put in some pretty cool corals that you know need that more specific attention, such as the Ganaporas and the SPSs and stuff, but you still have to do your water changes to get rid of that unbalanced um, ionic equation. Um, when we think of balling, we like to think of it as the high end. That doesn't mean, though, that it's perfect. It's extremely pricey when you get into very, very large tanks. My dream tank, it eats up some balling solution. It's definitely hard to find in the United States. It's probably easier to find in Europe, but other than TM, I don't know of anybody else that really puts out a good quality product in the U.S. and it's hard to get. You have to get it online. It requires more tests. If you want to do it right, you've got to be testing magnesium. You might want to be testing potassium and iodine. 
you know, and especially when you get into big tanks where you've got large dynamics to play with. It, it allows, though, for excellent coral growth in all areas. You don't need as many water changes except for to remove waste. And it's even got an added advantage. It works really good on ultra-low nutrient systems, including the Zeovit. Uh, my tank is proof to that. It's really nice. So when you start deciding, folks, on what setup you want to use in your tank, two-part, three-part, two-part plus, light balling or balling, look at the different methods. Weigh the pros and cons. Are you going to go with soft coral? Are you going to make it an SPS tank? Are you going to make it a mixed reef? Because that's going to determine what you're going to use. Hey, and for some, cost is going to be a factor. Others, it might be availability. Or for people like myself, it's going to be ionic, balanced, really close oceanic conditions. So I appreciate you watching, folks. I hope this educational video helps you out. Um, if you have any questions, please comment below or like or subscribe to our channel. We'll keep putting out great videos like this.